Live from Childers, Queensland, this is National Nine News. Good evening from the tragic scene in Childers. Fifteen young travellers are now confirmed dead in the fire at the Backpackers Hostel. Three more are still missing. Most of the victims were British, but three are Australians. From the survivors, there are tales of heroism and terrifying escapes over neighbouring rooftops. What caused the fire is still not known, and there's confusion about the hostel smoke alarms. They were installed, but did they work? Matt Dunstan begins our coverage of the disaster. For survivors, daylight brought the shocking realisation of the extent of the overnight tragedy. Just after midnight, fire engulfed the 100-year-old two-storey Palace Backpacker Hostel, which was crammed with mostly young overseas travellers here to make a few dollars during the fruit and crop picking season. Uh, the scene was just chaotic with uh, emergency services, vehicles everywhere, fire brigades, flashing lights, people running helter-skelter. The timber interior went up in minutes. Going pushed through about one and a half, one foot gap, uh, bars in the window, and they'll get pull through, shove the young lady through. Trying to keep calm is the hardest part. The roaring the flames, smoke, major shock, I had no idea. So um, I took off, the other bike slammed the door shut, started screaming at fire, fire. Darren Hill called the fire service and went back to help others out. Some climbed through windows onto the roof of an adjoining building. Of the 87 inside, only 69 escaped. Obviously power was lost and there's a large amount of smoke in the building, which did uh, hamper some of the people um, escaping the building. Ten were taken to Childers Hospital suffering smoke inhalation. The 15 confirmed victims and three missing include 10 British, three Australians, two Dutch and one each from Spain, Japan and Korea. For those who did escape, they're now half a world from home with nothing but the clothes they're wearing. Uh, nobody's got anything, nobody's got no passports, no tickets, no money, no clothes. I own a pair of football shorts. People at St Vincent de Paul give us all this uh, dapper gear. Support from the people of Childers has been overwhelming, who consider these backpackers part of their town. These international people have become part of the fabric of our community over the past number of years. They have played, laughed, drank and worked with us. Lovely people, always happy-go-lucky. Typical young people from, from throughout the world and um, just to believe that they've died in in this, this sort of manner, it, it, it's just too horrible to contemplate. Many of the backpackers had only recently met, but had formed close friendships through shared experiences. This has affected everyone. This has struck this place. It's rocked everyone here who's a member who's in that hostel. No, I've known some of these people for like three months. Um, worked with them, had a beer with them, had dinner with them. It's just it's horrifying. The question many in this town were asking today was how it happened. Arson and homicide squad detectives have arrived to investigate the blaze, but apart from saying it's believed to have started on the top floor, it could be days before they pinpoint the exact cause. Shocked survivors have questioned the building's safety. Why wasn't the smoke alarms working? Why weren't the fire extinguishers? Why weren't the uh, fire escape routes planned out? Investigators say fire alarms were installed. Whether they worked is yet to be determined. The whole system will be reviewed and assessments made of the, uh, uh, the system that was installed in the building. In Childers, Matt Dunstan, National 9 News. There's talk among the people here that the fire was deliberate. Police are also suspicious. They're investigating claims that threats were made to burn down the hostel. Though it's in deep shock, the town of Childers has rallied quickly for the aid of the traumatised young backpackers. The local people are feeding, clothing and giving beds to the survivors and helping them to cope with their grief. Arm in arm, backpackers and locals filed out of St Joseph's Church after a lunchtime memorial service, united in their grief come together in a time of prayer and, and uplifting one another and, and supporting one another. From the church, they return to the community centre, a place that's become their refuge and a place to call loved ones so far away. You must have a lot of faith in, in uh, the human being to cope, um, and I have a lot of faith in people. And it's a matter of being with them, allowing them to, uh, to work through it at their own pace. Councillors are doing their best to ease the pain. The Salvation Army also lending a hand wherever needed. They've lost their clothing, their passports and uh, things like that. And, um, 
but it's all been arranged and uh, they'll be on the road very soon. Locals and people from far away have come bearing gifts and to pay their respects. We've been in this situation once before and we know what it's like, so we thought we'd just give back to the community what they gave us to us. Just days ago, the people of Childers lined these streets, unified in joyous celebration for the passing of the Olympic torch. Now they've been unified again for all the wrong reasons. When you lose a, a, a friend, it would be a pretty devastating, I should imagine, for a lot of them. The Queensland Premier flew into Childers this afternoon to inspect the remains of the Palace Backpackers Hostel and to talk to survivors. Just walking and talking to, to the survivors, talking to the community, it's numbing. It's hard, hard to come to terms with it. But what is important is that the people involved, the victims, be supported, and that's what this community is doing. For the federal government, Foreign Minister Alexander Downer echoed the sentiments of a nation. It's, this is a, a major tragedy, and um, it's um, deeply disturbing to hear that the lives of young people in the prime of their own lives have been lost. A memorial service for the backpackers will be held this Sunday night. I just feel sorry for the parents back home. Um, you know, they're going to receive a phone call um, saying your son or daughter who you haven't seen for however many weeks or months, uh, maybe a year or so, you know, you haven't seen them for that long and they're just never going to come home. Carl Stefanovic in Childers, National 9 News. We're joined now by Superintendent Ken Benjamin. Superintendent, what about this talk that the fire was lit deliberately? Well, Bruce, it's very early in the investigation and it would be uh, inappropriate for me to comment at this stage. Uh, can I say that we've got a large uh, number of investigators on the scene and they're following up every lead. What is, is hampering our investigation at the present time is that I can't get my specialist people into that building because it's structurally unsound. What has to happen? Uh, what is happening is that the, the fire service is clearing the building for us. They'll clear, they've almost cleared the, uh, the, the bottom floor and what we'll do then is get some of our people in uh, and then the, fo the fire service will, uh, will reinforce the top floor and we'll be able to get our people in there. What about the, uh, the talk around town that threats were made against the hostel? Well again, uh, it'd be in inappropriate for me to comment on that, but as I said before, uh, our people are following up every lead at this stage. Superintendent Ken Benjamin, thank you. Thank you. Queensland Police have set up a special phone line for those wanting information about friends and family. The number is 1800 451 399. That number again, 1800 451 399. In the meantime, police are asking backpackers in Queensland to please phone home. This tragedy has caused shock, not just here, but among many families around the world whose children are backpacking in Australia. The fire is Queensland's worst in 20, 27 years. Prime Minister has likened it to last year's disaster in Switzerland, in which 14 young Australians died. Faced with a national tragedy of such scale, the Prime Minister could offer little comfort, remembering a time of similar heartache not long ago. You feel for families of these young people, particularly having in mind how many Australians felt, as well as, of course, the families of uh, those young Australians who died um, far away in Switzerland. This time, the majority of victims were British. Both state and federal governments plan to extend assistance to the families of all victims who may want to travel to the site. The Premier has foreshadowed a possible crackdown on hostels. The community needs to be acutely aware that there will be a full and proper investigation. There will be no cover-up of any kind. If there needs to be appropriate action, it will be taken. The Childers disaster is now thought to be the worst fatal blaze in Queensland since the whiskey a go, go mass murder in Brisbane in 1973, which claimed 15 lives. Two years later, in 1975, 15 died in a fire at Sydney's Savoy Hotel. Until now, the worst hostel blaze had been in 1989, when six died in the Down Under backpackers in Sydney's King's Cross. A national review of hostel regulations followed. More recently, Brisbane fire authorities were thankful no lives were lost when the busy city backpackers in Roma Street caught fire during the night in 1998. An internet site has been dedicated to the Childers tragedy to help affected backpackers stay in touch with family and friends. Various appeals have been set up by those in the backpacking industry to help those survivors who've lost everything. Let's hope that the industry can pull together and work through what's happened.
tourism officials are in shock. And the operators take their responsibilities very seriously and they, they're very concerned with their standards, with safety, and they have performed very well on that score. The Premier has already moved to settle international tourism nerves over the tragedy, pointing out the Queensland backpacking industry's excellent safety record. We would clearly want to provide that reassurance to the international and national community that this is not only a safe place to visit and a friendly place to visit, but people are safe here. Melanie Wendt, National 9 News. And Heather, the tributes on the bench behind me have been laid there by uh, surviving backpackers to their uh, friends who weren't quite so lucky. Uh, more are continuing to come in. Heather, that's the situation in uh, Childers at the moment. We'll come back to you later in the bulletin. All right, thanks, Bruce. We'll talk to you then.